In this video, we are going to discuss semaphores. But before we go into the concepts of semaphores, let us discuss the producer-consumer problem. This is also referred to as the bounded buffer problem. So we have a producer and this producer is producing items and putting into a buffer of some fixed size n. That is why it is referred to as a bounded buffer. It has a fixed size and from this buffer, the consumer will consume the items. Now, what will happen if the producer produces but the buffer is full? So the producer was producing items and this buffer got full. That means the speed of the consumer of consuming the items was less than the speed at which the producer was producing. So the buffer got full. But the producer is still going on producing. Another problem could be that now the buffer is empty, the producer has not produced anything as such, but the consumer is consuming from the buffer. So how can these two problems can be tackled? So for this, there should be some synchronization which is required between the producer and the consumer processes. Suppose we have the producer and if the count of the items which are available in the buffer is zero, then the consumer should wait. This is what we want. And as soon as the producer produces one item, then it should signal to the consumer that one item is available in the buffer. And if the consumer wants, then the consumer can consume from the buffer. So this kind of synchronization should be there. Also, if the buffer is full, that means the number of items which are available in this buffer is equal to the size of the buffer which is n, then the producer should wait. And as soon as the consumer takes out one item from the buffer so that there is one vacant space for a new item, then the producer should be signaled. That means if the count is equal to n minus 1, that means space is available in the buffer and then a signal should be sent to the producer to produce an item. So let's see how semaphores can help in this kind of synchronization. So semaphores are a synchronization tool for processes to synchronize their activities and they were introduced by the Dutch computer science scientist Dijkstra. This semaphore, it's an integer variable and it can have ac be accessed via two atomic operations. That means two operations can be performed on this semaphore and these two uh, operations are the wait operation and the signal operation. And both these operations are atomic in nature. That means when these operations are being performed, they cannot be interrupted by any other process. The wait operation was originally called P, which is Dutch for proberen and it means to test. And signal was originally called V, which is Dutch for verhogen and this means to increment. So what are the definitions of this wait and signal operation? Wait, if a semaphore is S and if the wait operation is performed on this semaphore, this is the definition. While S is less than or equal to 0, it will keep waiting. That means nothing will be done and the process will keep on looping inside this while loop. If the value of semaphore is positive, that means greater than 0, then it will be decremented by 1. In the signal operation, simply an increment of the semaphore is done. So these are the two basic operations of the semaphore. Now semaphores can either be a counting semaphore or it can be a binary semaphore. In the counting semaphore, the semaphore can have any integer value and there is no restriction on its value. This semaphore is then used to control the access to a resource which is having finite number of instances. Suppose an in resource is having five number of instances, then the value of semaphore can be initialized to five. If the number of instances is seven, that means 
the num value of semaphore can be initialized to 7. So, the semaphore will control the access to the instances of that particular resource. Now, any process which wants to use the resource will perform the wait operation on the semaphore. And what was the wait opera operation? That means if the value of semaphore is 0 or less than 0, it will keep on waiting. That means the resource is not available. And if the value of semaphore is positive, that means the resource is available, then it will take the resource and decrement the value of s by 1. So, any process which wishes to use the resource will perform the wait operation on the semaphore and decrement the count. Once the process has used that resource and it releases the resource, then it will perform a signal operation. And the, what is the signal operation? Simply increment the value of semaphore by 1, which shows that the resource is now available. And this is done by incrementing the count of the semaphore. When the count of the semaphore is 0, that means all the resources are, or the, are being used at that uh, point in time and so any process which wishes to use that resource now will block and this is because if the value of s is equal to 0, it keeps on waiting in the while loop. So the process will block till the time the count becomes greater than 0. As soon as the count will become greater than 0, the process will be out of the while loop and use the resource. The semaphore can also be binary in nature that means it can take only two values either 0 or 1 and this is the same as a mutex lock which we discussed in the previous video. So now what we want is that we have a producer and we have a consumer and this is our resource. So initially we have two semaphores over here. This is one semaphore full. Full means how many number of items are there available in the buffer. Initially, as there are no items which are available, the value of this semaphore is initialized to zero. Please note that these are the two semaphores we are going to use. Empty shows how many items can be put in this buffer that means how many spaces are available so if the size of the buffer was n and all the spaces are available right now so empty can be initialized to n if the producer produces two items and puts them in the buffer then the value of full will be equal to 2 that means two items are available and the value of empty would be 4 that means four spaces or four slots are still available for the producer to put items over there. Now let's see how the producer and the consumer codes can be implemented. So this is the producer code. The producer will produce an item and it will be stored in a some data structure item. Then it will wait on the semaphore empty. When it waits on the semaphore empty, that means empty will be decremented by 1 if it is not 0. So currently the value of empty is 4, so it will be decremented by 1 and it will become 3. Then it producer has to insert an item into the buffer. So since this buffer is being shared by the producer and the consumer both, it is a shared item. So before inserting into it, the producer will lock the buffer and insert the item which was produced into the buffer. Now M over here is a mutex. So we are using this mutex as a lock. So this lock and unlock is the same as the acquire the lock and release the lock that we studied earlier. So the producer has used this lock to access this buffer and insert the item in the buffer. So the value of empty has become 3. The producer has put this new item which was produced in the buffer. Once the producer has used the buffer, it will unlock the lock and then it will signal the full. 
signal the semaphore full means it will increment the full by 1. So, full now will become 3. Now, let us see how the consumer works. So, the consumer waits on full. Consumer waits on full that means it will decrement it by 1. So, it will decrement full semaphore by 1 and make it 2. Then because it wants to access the buffer by and consume that item, item, it will lock the mutex and then it will remove the item from the buffer and then unlock the buffer. So, once the item has been removed, then the consumer will signal the empty. Signaling means it will increment the empty by 1. So, this 3 will now again become 4 and then the consumer will proceed to consume the item. So, this is how the weight and the signal operations will be used on these two semaphores full and empty. Whenever the producer produces an item, it weights on empty and signals full. Whenever the consumer wishes to consume the item, it waits on full and signals empty. What will happen if the buffer is full? So, if the buffer is full, the value of full is 6 and the value of empty is 0. What will happen now? If the buffer is full, we want that the producer should not produce and put any item in the buffer. So, let us see what happens. Producer produces an item over here and puts it in the variable item. Then it waits on empty. Empty is currently 0 and we know that in the wait operation if the value of the semaphore is 0 the producer will now keep on looping in this while loop over here because if the value of semaphore is less than or equal to 0 then the producer keeps on looping. So, here we see that since the value of empty was 0 when the producer waits on, in, on this empty semaphore, it will keep on looping and it will not be able to put the new produced item into the buffer. So, the producer keeps on waiting over here. So, this is how we maintain that the producer is not putting anything in the buffer if the buffer is full. Now, let us see what will happen if the buffer is empty. If the buffer is empty, that means the value of full is 0 and the value of empty is 6. So, we want that if the buffer is empty, we do not want the consumer to consume anything. So, let us see how the consumer will work. It will wait on full. So, the value of full is 0. So, the consumer will keep on waiting on this semaphore and it will keep on looping in the while loop over here till the time there is some value or some item which is available in the buffer. So, we see that if the buffer is empty, the consumer will keep on looping over here. As soon as the producer produces any item, so let us say the producer has produced any item, it waits on empty, that means the value of empty becomes 5, it uses the mutex m to insert the item in the buffer. So, here it has inserted the item in the buffer, it unlocks the mutex and it signals full. Signals full means full, the value of full becomes 1. As soon as the value of full will become 1, the consumer which was waiting on full will now decrement this value back to 0 and consume this item over here. So, this is how we synchronize the two processes and take care that when the buffer is full, the producer does not put any item in the buffer and when the buffer is empty, then the consumer does not uses anything from the buffer.